Hello guys, Matthew here and welcome back again to the Tactic YouTube channel. It's been a while since I've made a new video based on my Curious Geek series, but just last week an idea popped into my head that I could do something with these two GTX 1050s in front of me. As we all know, GTX 1060 and GTX 1050 and 1050 Ti series were left outside, door shut from Nvidia's SLI party, which was kinda disappointing to say at least. We don't know the true reason for that, but you can of course guess a few on your own, but I will not go into that right now. On the other hand, as you can see by the title of this video, solution for that problem is slowly showing itself on the horizon. So, you're probably wondering how am I planning to do an SLI configuration with two same models of graphics cards which do not support it. As some of you may know, the answer to that is Microsoft's DirectX 12 API. Instead of using traditional SLI or Crossfire links, DirectX 12 has something what is called heterogeneous explicit multi-GPU support, which basically eliminates their need. What this in translation means is that game developers now have tools which enables them to simultaneously utilize different GPUs. GPUs in the same system, without depending on having a GPU of same brand, model or even VRAM size, with substantially less overhead and without any need of them using the so to speak official multi-GPU linking technologies like SLI and Crossfire. With this kind of transformation, technologies like the aforementioned SLI and Crossfire could in theory become a thing of the past, which should free up a portion of Nvidia's and AMD's developing departments so they could maybe transfer their resources to somewhere else. For example, in helping developers optimize their games for this purpose as that kind of developing can be rather difficult and challenging on game developers end. For you as an end user this basically means that you can pair up any DirectX 12 capable graphics card with each other. This particular scenario is one of which I'm exploring today and it's called as I said heterogeneous explicit multi-GPU configuration. This enables you to do a cross-model pairing like coupling an AMD's graphics card with Nvidia's as long as they have DirectX 12 support. As you may notice I said one of which implying that there's a second scenario and yes there is and that one is called homogeneous explicit multi-GPU configuration. This one represents a direct DirectX 12 control over SLI or Crossfire systems, so it's basically like your regular official SLI or Crossfire multi-GPU pairing, like for example two GTX 1080s in SLI or two RX 480s in Crossfire, but relying more on DirectX 12 for their control and performance. My situation is maybe a bit confusing since in theory two GTX 1050s make a homogeneous scenario as we have two same GPUs, but since this series doesn't support SLI officially, it's then considered as an explicit heterogeneous multi-GPU configuration scenario. Bottom line, both in homogeneous and heterogeneous explicit multi-GPU cases, DirectX 12 is bringing game developers the ability to more easily harvest the full power of GPU at hand, which was not the case with Implicit multi GPU configurations. On that note, I've decided to pair up up until now unpairable GTX 1050s as they don't have official SLI support, and since they are a very interesting and before all a pretty reasonable buy, which should in theory bring in a decent performance output when put together. Installation is simple, just put a second graphics card onto your motherboard and that's it. No SLI bridges, no nothing, you don't even have to have an SLI certified motherboard, as long as it fits the PCI Express slot, you are good to go. Of course, check if the driver installation went smooth, you don't even need to reinstall them if you already have your first Nvidia GPU and drivers installed before putting the second one, just restart your PC after booting for the first time, let the drivers do their thing and check if the GPU Z and device manager is registering the second GPU. Although this worked for me, if you want to be 100% sure, I advise you to make a clean install of the drivers. Lastly, let's not forget about having Microsoft 10 operating system as it supports DirectX 12, but I think we are all already familiar with that requirement. Of course, all of this wouldn't work if we didn't have applications which support DirectX 12 multi-GPU pairing, and we do, but as for now, not that much. For my first, and unfortunately, as you'll see later on why, also my only game, I've used Ashes of Singularity, which was basically the first game ever on the market which supported this kind of explicit multi-GPU DirectX 12 pairing, in particular for the heterogeneous scenario, and in one hand as a tech demo of the DirectX 12 API. As you can see by looking 
looking at the results, the performance bump in comparison to a single solution is all over the place. For the 1080p results using high settings preset, you'll see about 30% performance increase, while jumping to 16x9 1440p, it goes up to about 45%. So far so good, although still not financially viable and not making sense in the form of a real purchase of a second GTX 1050 so you can pair it up, but it's interesting to see performance gains based on something that wasn't marketed as such, so to speak. On the other hand, I've also experienced few anomalies, like for example, going up to 21x9 1344 times 1440 resolution, where results turned in favor of a single car solution as you can see it here. While using lower details and less complex textures, I saw performance gains dropping to around 10% throughout the first two resolutions, which was odd to say at least. GPU utilization varied from 20 to 80% depending on the scenario, but I feel like the main problem in my case was lack of video memory. Nvidia's G4 GTX 1050s are coming in with 2GB of default VRAM amount, which is a bit low even for 1080p resolutions nowadays, and especially when it comes to DirectX 12 API. That buffer was basically topped out in all of my benchmarking scenarios, so that could also be one of the potential reasons, beside the lack of further software optimization for this particular scenario, why I saw pretty inconsistent GPU utilization and results depending on the resolution and graphics preset in terms of the multi-GPU setup. As I mentioned, unfortunately that was the only game I could do some tests with. Although other games like Deus Ex Mankind Divided, Rise of the Tomb Raider and Hitman do support multi-GPU DirectX 12 configurations, they still don't support or to be more precise weren't developed for heterogeneous explicit multi-GPU DirectX 12 setups. For example, Tomb Raider, which was developed together with Nvidia, only supports homogeneous explicit multi-GPU DirectX 12 setups, which didn't work for me since GTX 1050 series doesn't officially support SLI, although I technically had two same GPUs. This could be only a matter of time when we will see that support expand to more games and to both scenarios, homogeneous and heterogeneous, but then again, it can also depend on direct support from these two GPU manufacturers, so I wouldn't exclude your usual industry shenanigans, while the majority of the work in the end falls onto developers of those games, and if they decide that they don't want to go that extra mile for a certain feature, we will be left empty-handed in terms of these niche scenarios, and I don't blame them, that's a lot of work for a few percent of the market, and if so. For now, I can just hope that in the near future we will have more titles and better in-game support, which will enable homogeneous and especially heterogeneous explicit multi-GPU DirectX 12 configurations in both the green and red side of the market, so I can revisit this topic or some kind of different variation of it once again. And that's it guys for this time from me, thank you once again for watching, toss me a thumbs up if you like this video, it helps me a lot, leave your comments, questions and thoughts in regards of this topic, are you glad to see things possibly going into a completely new direction with DirectX 12, feel free to suggest some other topics for me to explore down below, and of course don't forget to subscribe to the Tactic YouTube channel for more content like this, or you can check out some of my other videos from before.